Today, I'm gonna to take you into my life and my fashion out of the closet. Hi everyone, it's me, Sasha Velour, and you are in my apartment here in Brooklyn. I keep all of the beautiful drags behind this corner in my tiny closet. Come with me and we'll take a look. So this is my closet where I keep everything. This is literally as clean as it has ever been cleaned for you guys. There's not the best system in the world, but I have gloves up in here, hips and body up here, tights, etc., and then shelves and shelves of costumes. You can't be a hoarder in New York. You have to like really be realistic about what you can hold on to. Up here is where I keep my wigs. Thankfully, because I'm known for being bald, I don't have to have as many as some other queens, but I still love them. The, the really nice styled ones go up here. I like to have every single aspect thought out from the shoe, from like the sole of the shoe <laughs> to the tip of the nail. And most of that is honestly just for me, just because I feel more complete when I know that I've put thought into everything and that everything is chosen. I try to keep everything kind of organized with little drawings. I have basics, headpieces and crowns, wigs that are not in use, feathers, scarves, and props. I think I'm just like the right kind of anal retentive that that just makes me so happy and fulfilled. Before Drag Race, I was pretending that this was an office. I was a freelance graphic designer, so I actually had a computer in here as well. Everything that I do in terms of fashion is really informed by being a graphic designer and an illustrator. So I think about character design a lot when I put my looks together. I think that informs a lot of my style and makes it kind of consistent, even though I do lots of different silhouettes and eras. This is my promo dress. Like in real life, it's really red and really pink together. It's like my favorite color combination, but it was kind of made a little bit more pink in the final version. This jacket, I hand painted and I wore on the first episode of Drag Race. This is my boyfriend's jacket that he wore for catering. I just hand painted it with like all these paints to try to look like a Basquiat painting to sort of represent the art scene of New York. I have a box of sentimental things and I kind of leave it at there. Everything else has to be useful for me. This stuff I want to keep, and it definitely includes some of my dry face things. My cowboy outfit, these gloves, my Madonna collar. <laughs> I just made these out of paper covered with fabric. Oh my god, the mohawk spikes from the big hair challenge. I didn't even know I still had those. I actually lied on Instagram and I said that I had drawn this away, but I haven't. It's just really ugly. <laughs> my princess dress. <laughs> but you know what? I stand by this detailing. That was, this is what I spent most of the time on. I think it's kind of clever. If this had fit, I bet that would have been cool. It was too many concepts, they were right. The very first stage of any costume idea is drawing a sketch. And so I'm usually able to show that to designers so they have some idea what I'm talking about because sometimes it's hard to describe fashion in words. This notebook I brought with me to Drag Race and I wrote down all of the challenges so I could remember what happened and then I sketch all my costumes using colored pencils. Usually I spend about a week on each look. After that, I'm usually like, if it either exists or I'm ready to move on to the next one. <laughs> the So Emotional dress that my neighbor, Florence DeLee, she's a drag queen. She made the dress for me and then all the House of Velour kind of hand sewed all the fringe. It's a theme, hand sewing fringe and stoned it because so, I kind of want it to look like it was melting on me. And I didn't know at the time, I didn't know what song I was going to be performing in it, but I wanted something kind of that style. The performance is meant to be like a tiny little movie in three minutes on the stage. And so I like having my performance costumes especially be really, really different. This, I wore this at the finale. I wanted to look like a bride of Dracula, but it also played into me looking like a dinosaur for every look that I did the finale. Because I remember reading that dinosaurs were potentially actually covered with feathers. And that was like the most inspiring thing that I had heard in terms of fashion. Fashion is infinitely flexible. And that's kind of what I found and what I love to play with. I have gloves. 
I mean, I usually have nails too, but I love gloves because you can add another color, another element, another silhouette to the outfit. I just love it. The vintage queen in me always wants to have a pair of gloves for everyone. This is the drag race crown. Of course, this is sized for a queen wearing a giant wig. Thank God I was wearing glasses when I was crowned, because otherwise... I thought about making a dress that matches this and just wear it as a beautiful collar. Because <laughs> I can like turn it at an angle and put it on my bald head. Even though this is my reigning year, I think I'm just starting to get into the swing of really understanding my unique style. And I have like things planned for the horizon that are even more daring than stuff I've done before. And I think that's a good challenge too, because it's easy to get comfortable and drag is supposed to make you push yourself beyond your own boundaries too. I can't be limited by what I have to wear day to day. I need a fantasy world where I can like fully stretch my muscles, my gender muscles. Well, I hope you enjoyed getting to see the closet behind the queen. Now I need to fit half of this room into a single suitcase. So you need to get out of my closet. Go, get out of the closet. Come out, get out of the closet, darling. Out, out, out. <laughs>